is the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Now, the inclusion of eight NPFL players in the Super Eagles list for the doubleheader friendly against Ecuador and Mexico uh, would also look at Arsenal, who is more likely to make a return to the USC to the USCL uh, at this point in time. This will be the crux of our conversation as we have Monday Thomas joining the conversation. He's a sports journalist. Monday Thomas, thank you for joining us. Good morning to you, and I hope you're having a fantastic time. Yes, uh, we are. Thank you so much. Let's get to it. With the development of having eight players, uh, you know, invited to join, what do you make of this uh, development? All right. It's quite great if you ask me, and I think I think it's time for this players to be included at the top flight. I mean, top flight of Nigerian football is uh, the NPFL players representing uh, the clubs in the very big stage, which is the national team. It's a thing of honor. It's a thing of joy. It's a thing of uh, great value, and of course, the boost in this player CV if they get to play for their home country, but. I think in recent times we, we get to talk coaches, especially the foreign, uh, the foreign coaches to, uh, include local players. And, and sometimes we don't get to see these local players included in the national team. Right now, uh, the Super Eagles have not confirmed the, uh, coach for the next competition, which is the Afghan qualifiers. And the man who's at the aim of affairs right now, Saishi Yusuf, has opted to include these eight players who for me, they've done remarkably well in their club side. Let's take a look at the duo of Victor Obama, who plays for Aimba, and Ishak Rafi, who plays for Rivers United. Ishak Rafi right now is the highest goal scorer in the NPFL with about 14 goals, and uh, Victor Obama has already scored uh, 10 fourth goals. To be very specific, he scored 12 goals this season for Aimba in the NPFL. And now, this is my problem with this locally dead player. I mean, some of them, they just want to get into the national team to get their way out of the country. Because this eight player, take a look at it, in the next tournament, in the next competition, which is the outcome qualification, you, you won't get to see these players because they just want to have that first cap and then they perform well and then they are open to scout all over the world, maybe in Uzbekistan. These players are just eager on leaving Nigeria. They don't just want, they don't want to play for the national team. They don't really care about the national team. They just want to count. And thankfully, the opportunity has come. So I just, I would just like to use this medium to change their mindset that they should not just thinking of breaking into the Super Eagle squad, but they should be thinking of making a name for themselves at the big stage, which is playing for the national team. Congratulations to the likes of Ibrahim Bwari of Kamatsu United, Issa Ali of Remo Stars, Chiamaka Madu of Rivers United, Babatunga Peace of Quara United, and as I earlier mentioned, Victor Obama, Ishak Rampiu, the goalkeepers, of course, Adewala Dane Club of Quara United is a champion uh, last season with Quara United talking the NTFL, and as well as uh, the goalie of Oyimba, Ojo Olomoneke. I would like them to not just break into the Super Eagle squad, but Think of making a name for themselves, creating history, maybe winning the next African, because they've got potential, sorry. They should not just look at leaving the country, getting using the Super Eagles as a, an end to a means or a bit to leave the country. But first off, I'll say congratulations. It's great to see eight NPFL players for the double header encounter uh, that we'll see against uh, Mexico and Ecuador. Uh, Monday, it, it's, it's, it is a good development, uh, you know, up here standing in for Nigeria, you know, at national and international levels. But then, would you actually want to blame them if they have the right set on the international level when we have all of the issues with remuneration and the local league, uh, even at the national level? So, why blame them if they are putting their rise on the international scene? And also, are you saying that um, this is actually this development, uh, the NFA is not responsible for this? Are you saying that? It might just be the handiwork of these players. Well, I've got to be brutally honest. The football in Nigeria is not the very best, but I, I can see a future. I can see, I can see a future from the, where the NPFL season, especially this season, is going. What, what, what I meant by these players leaving uh, Nigeria when, when they have this opportunity to play for the Super Eagles is that most of them, they go to obscure leagues. I mean, Azerbaijan, Uzbekistan, where they cannot be seen. I mean, where their quality cannot be visible to the coaches 
of the uh, of the, the maybe the next coach of the Super Eagle. So if you are to make a step out of the country, you just should think of going to bigger clubs. I mean, you should think of going to England. I, I know opportunities may not just come to uh, from uh, England, but they should think of uh, developing themselves to the point that they can play in the big leagues. It's not just about having the playing for the Super Eagles and having a chance to go to this obscure league. I'm not a fan of going to uh, Armenia, Uzbekistan, Singapore. No way. I think Nigerian players, we've got talent that we can play in the Spanish La Liga, top flight league, maybe the championship in England. So I'm not saying that, that uh, going out of the country is something bad, but they should think they should just aim higher so that they can come back home and play for the Super Eagles because that's where you get to be called up. Because you can't expect to play in Uzbekistan and someone playing an English criminal will not be called up in, in, in place of you. So... That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. But one would expect, I mean, one would think that this is actually uh, a development that should be welcomed in the sense that we have constantly talked about local talent and, you know, incorporating, you know, the locals into a football game, not necessarily having to scout for players outside of it and moving forward. Um, you also want to agree with me that there might just be a possibility of, you know, having these guys on a permanent basis and playing for the Super Eagles rather than scouting outside when we have local talent as this at home. Certainly. I think we've got brilliant, brilliant talent here in the country. I, I, it's time we get to include more players. Eight, eight is a lot, and we, we I want to see more. Like I want to see more of this locally based players because sometimes I go watch them. They, they impress me a lot, and it's quite a shame that in different times they were not given opportunities in the uh, top flight, which is the national team. So hopefully, with the Wafu also carrying on going in uh, Niger, uh, the young staff are also doing something great there. We've got great talent right there. In Niger currently for the under 20. I'm very sure this is the this is the start of something great. But I would just advise the coaches to be very spot on in their scouting because it's not every locally based player that can be, of course, with me, uh, replacing a foreign based player. It, it sounds like there's more to this that we don't know. You have an insight to all of this, but of course we have to move away from this conversation. <laughs> now, Arsenal and Tottenham Hotspur, who's more likely to return to the UEFA Champions League? Well, yesterday we saw we saw a game that should have been the top four decider. Well, if Arsenal would have gotten uh, gotten uh, three points in that particular game, uh, it, it would have been done and dusted, and then Arsenal will return to the UEFA Champions League uh, for the first time in five years. But it was the other way around, quite sad for Arsenal fans. They have to wait until the end of the season. So, Tottenham Hotspur also have to wait for the end of the season. But first off, it was a clinical performance by the White League, beating the Gunners three goals to Neil, two, two goals from Harry Kane, who's a Derby King. And of course, Song Yun Min, who simply could not stop scoring. Song Yun Min has scored 21 goals this season. Dejan Kulubetsky has provided more assists than any other player in 2022. Harry Kane has scored 15 goals this season. I mean, if you compare them to the Arsenal side, the likes of Bukayo Saka, Edward Nketiah, Lacazette, you will see that sort of hot score have got a better team than Arsenal. And you take a look at the next game for sort of hot score. They host Burnley at the new Tottenham Stadium. And the uh, second game, or the last game, is going to be against Norwich City at the Carver Road. Sports have easier fixtures, and I think they will make it to the top four at the expense of the Garners. Arsenal, in their next game, they travel to the St. James' Stadium to take on Newcastle, who are the priciest team. They are rejuvenated to make their fans happy. Uh, being the penultimate game of the season and their home game. So I'm seeing Arsenal faltering in that particular venue and maybe getting a win against Everton. Tottenham and Arsenal need to get six points if they want to make it to the top four. But the, the sport is just for one person, and I see Tottenham on score making it to the Europa Championship next season. All right. Thank you so much, Monday Thomas, for your analysis and, of course, um, you know, all the useful insight that you always bring on Fridays. I would do appreciate it. Appreciate you for always having me as well. Do have yourself a fantastic weekend. And you too.
You too as well. That's the size of the show for today. It's Friday. I'm thanking God. I can't get. I can't wait to get out of here. And maybe I might just have to go to the beach or something. Miss, what are you doing? <laughs> Well, we need to move away. Immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being part of the breakfast. We appreciate your time as always. And we look forward to having you join the conversation on Monday. The time will be seven o'clock. But if you missed out on any part of it, it's all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And do subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Messi Bopo. And I'm Justin Akadoni. Many thanks for being a part of the show. Bye for now.